Step one, just simply did the background nice and dark. Step two will be leaves. I already did some of the leaves. I figured you didn't have to watch me do all of them. Just kind of a simple press down and up. And this is basically just background. Yes, the rest of the painting will go on top of it so the leaves don't have to be too defined. Now I'm putting in some of the stems, sort of. Again, does not need to be too defined. Now I started to put in some of the flowers. And as you saw me do there is I double loaded what they call double loading the brush, two different colors on it. So I can get the two different colors not quite blended, but both of them appearing on the little flower. And then I put in the little centers and the little I'm using green dots. And a few more flowers. In a moment, I'll be changing the color on the flowers. I switch to a blue and yet pink. And they should appear right after I finish doing the insides on these. Oh no, I went back and deepened the color on some of the stems. Yeah, see now I've done the blue with the pink. Again, double loaded. But I do go back and put in some of the color, especially when they start to kind of meld together. Again, just more flowers, more flowers. As you see, yeah, I'm putting a little of the color in without double loading. And then I go back to double loading and making the first leaves. Now I'm putting in the center. On these, I use the light blue instead of the yellow, but I still use the green to put the little dots in. Now I'm not actually copying any flowers. I'm just sort of putting in little star shapes. And the reason I'm able to go over like I did right there is this is done at different uh, stages. There is drying in between them like that. I did the leaves and let it dry. I did the stems and let it dry. I did some of the flowers and then let it dry. Again, we dried here. Didn't show you the first leaf, but I'm showing you the second, which shows you how I did the first leaf. Now this one is supposed to be a tulip. Again, it is my representation of a tulip. Oh, you would have seen right there that I messed up. And being water-based, I can clean it up if I do it really quickly. And a little shading in there to hopefully make it look a little round and not quite flat. And then back to shading the leaves. If you ever notice a leaf, it's not actually one color. It changes as the light hits it and it moves. The dark little shadow in the bottom right section is because I moved my little magnifying lamp over to give me better light and hadn't realized I'd covered part of the camera on the phone. So you may miss me doing some of the flowers here. Again, kind of the same technique. It's double loaded, just different colors and kind of a different style. But on these, I'm doing a little bit more filling in the colors because the blue and the white were definitely, or I think that was blue and pink at this point, were definitely uh, melding together too quickly into one color. So I'm going back quite a bit to add the darker blue and the pink highlights. And now I'm adding in some more of the stems for those flowers coming down. 
again drying period now I'm back to doing the tulip flower itself like I said this is a very my look take on a tulip remember I told you I'm not an absolute professional I just do what I like doing and this is how tulips look to me so I just get the leaf shape in this again is the underlying color and now I'm highlighting again an underlying color to separate the different leaves on the tulip and coming back in with some shadow on it and you'll see me doing an awful lot of making that larger making it smaller fiddling around with it till it gets to where I want it to be now I've darkened that center leaf. Again, this is an underlying color. There we go. I'm lightening it up now. That way it gives some definition where you can see there is truly different leaves. And now back to highlighting the difference between the leaves. A little more careful this time because I definitely this is closer to the final defining the two leaves apart and I'm doing a lot of mixing on my palette and on the painting itself just trying to get the color I want this tulip to be it definitely is a purple violet oh and now we're doing the bottom holding leaf which I did in a deep blue rather than green so it would stand out more against the green and adding a little bit more flowers in ones that are you see from the side rather than fully opened up and I forgot to move the camera so you're missing some of them I've done at the bottom but you can see what I'm doing with the ones at top and now that I finally remembered to move the painting you can see the few I did at the bottom. Again, these flowers were dried, which is why I could do the other ones on top of it without worrying. And throwing in just a few more, kind of trying to get the, to my eye the balance. And again another dry period so now I'm going back I wasn't quite happy with the color of the leaves so I found and blended some more to give me more of the deeper purple that I kind of wanted and kind of smoothing out some of the bumps little blending on the canvas of the colors taking the color from the side leaves and putting it into that center so it does blend in now I've gone back I put too much green in the center so I had to kind of put the color back in again to separate them and now this is the main reason I wanted to do this painting I wanted to do a spider web, but I want it to be in a garden. So yes, the filaments are way bigger than what a spider would do. And I goofed there. So again, just take it off. And since the underlying paint was already dry, all that came up was the white. And then just start putting in the circular. Again, it's not perfectly circle. I'm not as good a web designer as the actual spider, but I went around and I did go from the outline lines just like a spider does. So it does look like it hooks on 
because the circle isn't perfect. It goes from spoke to spoke. Need to make that one a little bit longer. Add another spoke in that wasn't there. And I have the two a little bit far apart, so I put another one in. And the reason I did like the half circle on top and then come back to do the bottom is just to keep my hand from laying down in the wet paint. So I did the top part and then I can move my hand down to the center part. And let's start in the spider. Kind of was going with more of the, um, we call them wool spiders here. And then I realized the spider didn't have any web to sit on, so I had to go make some more web. But back to the wolf spider. It's a, what we call them. It's one of the most common spiders in the world. There are so many different varieties. But I kind of like them. There's a whole lot of them around our house. And I'm actually putting them in a web. Wolf spiders are hunters. They don't make webs. But I figured I'd do the gray. So I got the back body and not quite circled. I did want to taper the back, put the head on. Now the legs, make them a dark or made them black so they do stand out. Then I had to remember that spiders have eight legs, so I had to put in the eight. And then again, a little bit of shading so that it sticks out a bit. And then the eyes. Don't know how well they show up. They were done in yellow. I did four across, quote, the top and two lower. And then again, dry time. And now that we dried, I can put more flowers in over the web. So I can actually give the web some definition. It sits back in the garden. Same type as flowers as what I put on the right. And I think I use the same colors, the blue and the pink. The stems in. Nope, still working on flowers. And again, just kind of touch-ups here and there. And the finished product. And like I said, the finished product. This way you get the whole view of it. Totally dried up. The spider does not stick out immediately. I like paintings where you see something different every time you go looking. And like I said, it's simply done. But it was something I wanted to do and I enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you for coming along on my journey. And to help my channel, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Doesn't cost you anything and really helps me. Thank you.